The Single Mom Blog Podcast, episode 56. This is the Single Mom Success Podcast. Our mission is to help single moms find advice, support, ideas, and hopefully some humor along the way to help them navigate through this crazy single parenting gig and build the most amazing lives for themselves and their children. Please be sure to stop by the singlemomblog.com for more great articles, free downloads, giveaways, and more. Now, let's dive in. Hey guys, welcome to the Single Mom Blog Podcast. I am so glad that you joined me for this episode. I am going to dive right in today. Uh, There was recently an article that was posted, uh, though I wouldn't exactly call it news. Um, It did come from Fox News, so, you know, there's that. (laughs) Um, But they recently posted a story, article, something... um, that kind of made its way around social media and got a lot of play because it was a story about the guy from the Cosby show, Jeffrey Owens. And I'm not sure if you're familiar with who he is. Uh, he was actually the guy who played El- Elvin, Elden, Elvin, Elvin. Um, anyway, so who was, I guess, married to the oldest daughter, the character of the oldest daughter in the show. And, uh, there's a story, they, they showed a picture of him um, bagging groceries at uh, Trader Joe's. And they, I, I'm not even sure why they thought this was a good thing to run or why they would post this, uh, but they're getting a lot of backlash, and, and rightly so, because it's almost as though, well, it's not almost as though, it is, they are slamming the sky for no longer being, you know, an actor and having a a job, a regular job. I mean, he's working. So I'm not entirely certain what they thought the whole point they were going to make with this was, but um, it was really petty and awful. And uh, again, it's Fox News, so I don't necessarily uh, expect uh, a lot of great things from them, but this is pretty low even for them, right? Like, Who attacks someone for having a job? Not all actors remain actors forever. Not all actors, singers, politicians, not all of them stay famous forever. Not all of them, uh, you know, stow, you know, stow away money for a rainy day or for when they're not, you know, I'm fairly certain that his idea was not that he was not going to act again and therefore needed to get another job. But the man is working and he's earning a living and he's supporting himself. And it's astonishing to me that they would choose to, I, I don't know, belittle him or degrade him in some fashion for having that job. And a ton of people are coming after him for that because it is just, it's disrespectful. It's rude. And there's no reason for it. It, There was no point to it other than to say, hey, look at this guy. Look how far he's fallen. Ha, ha, ha. That's wrong. That's not okay. You know, you don't, you don't do that to people who decided that this was a good thing. And, you know, I get, you know, they're getting a lot of, you know, I guess they say that, you know, even bad publicity is good publicity, but it's, I just... I can't. It's not okay. And, and it kind of brought to mind for me um, the, the whole topic of this podcast. And it's really about how people make these judgments about the value of who you are based on what you do or based on that one little snapshot they get of you at the time. So, for example, I... One of the things that burns my ass, and it always has, is the people who post things on social media or they share pictures or they write these big long tirades about how they were in line at the store and this person who had a brand new phone and a really fancy purse was paying for their groceries with food stamp cards and I pay my taxes and I work hard and I don't have those things and blah, 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 and got into a nicer car than I drive. So here's my thing. I received a ton of judgment. I got stares. I got glared at. I got people doing that thing when they saw me when I was on 
government assistance and I got food stamps to help pay for my food to support my children um, or to feed my kids, right? Uh, I would get people who would do that in line at the grocery store. And I'm looking at them like, who, who are you to judge me, right? And yes, I had a cell phone. And yes, I had all this stuff. Um, a car that I was paying for monthly. Yes, I had, you know, um, I, it wasn't really a fancy purse, but you know, yeah, I had a decent cell phone. But here's the thing. Um, I worked a full-time job. You don't know that I'm not working a full-time job. You can't just assume that because I'm paying with food stamps that I'm just sitting on my butt popping out kids trying to get somebody to take care of me and that I'm just leeching off the government. You can't make that assumption about me because you don't know, right? I was getting help, but I was working a full-time job at the same time. I just didn't make enough to cover all of the expenses that I had to cover and the child care, which was as expensive as my rent. So basically I was paying what would be the equivalent of two different rents, right? If, if So think about if you had to pay your mortgage or your rent twice in the same month, how would that affect your finances, right? How would that affect your ability to take care of your family? How would you be able to afford groceries or gas or the lights or water, right? Food. How? Would you still be okay or would you be pretty struggling pretty bad, right? Even though you're working a job. So I, I always found it like, so I would see these posts and I remember seeing a response, you know, from someone saying, yeah, you know, you may see me with the cell phone, but what you don't know is that my parents pay that bill so that I can have the cell phone. What you don't see is that this expensive designer purse that I have, I got at the Goodwill, right? I, you know, it's, it's astonishing to me. It really is how people just can look at a situation and go, sum it up and go, yeah, I got you figured. You have met this standard in my brain, right? Just because you're getting government assistance, you must be a total leech. You must be someone who's expecting the government to take care of you. You must be sitting on your butt at home watching cable that I helped pay for and eating bonbons that you bought with the food stamps that come from my damn taxes, right? That is the attitude that so many people have. And it is so infuriating to me. Um, you know, and here's another one. I have had people, you know, I had this one dude on Twitter. Oh my God, it was ridiculous. And, and there are some, I'm going to tell you a little secret. Um, I, I sometimes enjoy going on Twitter and getting, uh, the, the Trump followers all riled up. <laughs> and, and again, if you're listening to my podcast and you're a Trump supporter, you know, I, I, I'm not entirely certain why you're listening to my podcast. Um, you're definitely welcome here, but I'm not a huge fan of Trump. Um, I'm happy to have an open, honest discourse about it. Um, I try not to be extremely rude about it or, you know, I just have my certain opinions and values and beliefs and they are just completely polar opposites of, of what pretty much everything Donald Trump stands for. So um, I really have, I, I take issue with a lot of him, but one of my biggest issues that I have is with a lot of his supporters who just sort of automatically jump down your throat and call you an idiot or a libtard or um, any of the fun little slurs that they come up with. But um, I had one guy who <laughs> like, start he gave me a hard time about something and I was like oh I'm like you seem very grumpy do you need a hug I think you need a hug like that's kind of how I mess with them because it just gets them all irate like <laughs> it's I don't know why <laughs> but I mean it is kind of patronizing but it's 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 good natured ribbing and and again there have been many many people that I have have gotten into a good open discourse about and it's been civil and and informative and non insults you know insults were not thrown but um there was this one guy who 
I said that to him, like, you seem, you know, very upset. He's like, well, you know, you die. Oh, no, my favorite insult was it. No wonder you're single. That's the one that shows up all the time. No wonder you're single. So because I have a strong opinion and I express it intelligently and articulately, that's the reason I must be single. Because I can't imagine any other, uh, you know, connection you would make based off of a single comment that I made on Twitter. Like, you assume that because I am able to speak well and, and make an intelligent argument that that must be the reason I'm single. Or because I blatantly disagree with your point, that must mean I'm an evil bitch. Right? That must be the reason that I'm single. Um, and it is astonishing. I Like, I say astonishing a lot because I feel like that's how, like, I find myself amazed every time it happens. And I'm not sure why. I think that's probably a good thing. Maybe I'm not completely, totally jaded. But I find myself amazed at just the absolute just bile that comes from these people where they're just spewing anger and, and malice and just nasty just comes out of them. Um, and so, you know, he said something and I was like, you know, I, I said a little kind of smart assy comment back, nothing insulting, just like I, you know, and he said, well, you know, oh, you know, um, you, that, no wonder you're single and you're probably miserable because your kids are in jail and da 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 da. I was like, dude, why would you, first of all, my children are little. I mean, my boys aren't that little anymore, but they're still kids. They're not in jail. That assumption is just, um, so again, is the assumption that because I'm a single mother, my children must be miscreants and therefore in jail. Interesting. So just these conclusions that people jump to or these assumptions or these judgments that they make. Um, I had one gentleman tell me, and, and granted, I, and I will say this, it is a majority of men who are, they are spewing this. It is really disturbing to me how many men out there are this god awful awful. I know it shouldn't probably, but it does. I mean, I'm kind of an optimist. I try and believe that the majority of people are good. But the majority of the people that I come across who make these comments, they're men. They're men just completely bashing me for being a single mom, saying my kids must be in jail, or of course I'm single because I'm such an awful bitch, or I blah, blah, blah. You know, why don't I had one dude, he's like, why don't you go back in the kitchen and find something useful to do? I was like, dude, and you're like, are you married? I feel bad for your poor wife. Like, is this how you talk to your wife, to your sisters, to your mom? One dude who was particularly vile and through like the most amazingly, I mean, as far as insults go, they were, they were good insults. They were really not nice. Um, and just the nasty things that came out of this dude's mouth. And then I looked at his Twitter, this fool's got two daughters. I was like, seriously, do you talk like that about your daughters? Cause that's just disturbing. So it seems like we live in this society now where we've gotten to a point where we just make this flash judgment about people based on two seconds of information, right? And, and we've decided wh whether they're good or they're bad. Doesn't matter whether we agree or we don't. Eh, I'm not going to like you because, right? And I'm guilty of it too. I mean, I've, I've done the same thing. I, I don't think to that extreme... Though I know, I will admit, one of my biggest shortcomings is anything political. Like with the, the a lot of the people who are Trump supporters. Um, and again, there are many who I can have a really good open discussion about where it's like intelligent ideas and thoughts um, and premises and, you know, arguments are shared back and forth, Right. They're respectful of mine. They don't agree, but they're respectful. They're not calling me names. They're not disgusting. They're not rude. But then there's that other part. <laughs> and I sit there and I look at some of the rhetoric that they spew. Like a lot of times when somebody makes a, a comment 
or says something, I'll I'll take a look at their at their Twitter feed real quick just to see. Um, and if I see just a lot of the ranting and the just the vileness, even on their what they're posting, you know, then I've just sort of automatically made a decision. I'm like, you're clearly one of the cult members. I, I call them the people who are just die hard. I don't care what Trump does. I'm going to follow him and kiss the ground he walks on. I call them his cult members. Um, and so, you know, because they're the people who I feel no matter what you say to them, it's not going to affect how they treat you or their opinion. Now, I'm not looking for anybody to change my opinion necessarily. I'm not trying to change anybody else's opinion. But, um, you know, if we can sit and talk to each other and speak about things that are important, you know, maybe we can all come to not necessarily changing our opinion, but maybe come to a better understanding and a nice middle ground, right? If, if there is such a thing, right? So, but yeah, the, the few people, but I make snap judgments and maybe there's some people that, you know, maybe that dude, maybe he was just having a bad day. Maybe. But based on his Twitter feed, probably not because it was all just vile attacks, you know, and I think that, you know, of course, with social media and everything being online and so quick to be shared, you know, like that picture of that guy, the second that article ran, it went viral. Like it went everywhere. So now this poor guy who at one point had a little bit of a claim to fame and by all accounts, you know, from people that have worked with him is a decent guy good guy. Now he's got his face plastered everywhere because he has a job that's something totally different than what he used to do, but it's a job. The man's making money, right? So, you know, but now it's just everywhere. You can't get away from it. So, That's just sucks. Like he was just living his life under the radar, happy as a clam, no worries. And then boom, somebody took a picture of him and it got shared everywhere. Like that's not cool. And now everybody, you got people judging him, you got people defending him. And then this poor guy is probably like, man, I was just trying to bag groceries and pay my bills. Like that's all I wanted to do. You know, and so this judgment, I've had people assume that because I'm a single mom that I'm stupid because I have kids and I went, I didn't go to college. I graduated high school, but I have people that assume, I mean, well, I did go to college. I have taken college classes, just never gotten a degree, but I digress. Um, but (laughs) you know, they assume that because I'm a single mom with three kids, I must not even have a high school diploma. Do you get knocked up in high school? No. What? What? No. And even if I did, who cares? Why is it your business? Why should you care? Why does it matter to you in the slightest? Does it affect your daily life? No, but it gives you that quick second of just, oh, that that good feeling that you get when you get to judge somebody and it makes you feel like you're better. You're better than them. You know, that guy... That poor guy, and look, everybody's looking at, I, I, I swear to God, they posted that story with a sort of mentality of, look how far he's fallen. The fool, the dude's living his life. He hasn't fallen. He's just doing something else. Did you ever stop to think that maybe he decided he wanted to quit acting? Huh. Did you ever decide that, you know, maybe he enjoys working and bagging groceries at Trader Joe's? Maybe, you know, there have been millionaires who have oodles and oodles of money who go out and just randomly work in dead end, quote unquote, dead end jobs just for a day, just to have that feeling. Who, who gets to judge? Who gets to say what's good and what's not, what's okay and what's not? And you know, the fact that a lot of times it comes back on single moms, especially that judgment, right? That judgment of, oh, I've had people assume that because I'm a single mom, I must be on welfare, right? 
they're paying. I've had people say, oh, well, why don't you go back to your double wide trailer and go collect food stamps so that I can continue? I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? You don't know me. But you're just going to assume that? You know, my daughter's, <laughs> my ex, my daughter's dad, he used to do that to me too. In his mind, his assumption was that because I was a single mom, my wanting to be with him and having our daughter was a way for me to entrap him. He literally looked me in the face one day and told me, he goes, you're not going to trap me. You're not going to trap me. I don't care what you think you're doing. You're never going to trap me. And I was like, what the hell are you talking about? I rent my own house. I pay my own bills. I have my own job. I've taken care of my two children prior to meeting you and having our daughter their entire lives for the most part by myself. I have not had anyone help me except for the occasional my family helping me out. But, you know, that's just I know married couples that the families help them out, you know, but I've never had a man take care of me. I've never had a man pay my bills. I've never had a man do jack for me. The reason I was with you was because I wanted to freaking be with you. It had nothing to do with getting you to pay for my bills, getting you to take care of me, tricking you into marrying me. I don't ever want to get married. I have no intention at all of ever walking down the freaking aisle. Not for me. Ever. I don't want to. I'll be with somebody for my life if I find somebody that I can tolerate that long and they can tolerate me. Sure, great. But I don't want to get married. It's not in my cards. It's not, I mean, I have yet to meet someone that has ever made me think I might change my mind. There's one person in my life who's been my dear, dear, dear friend for about 20 years. And I've told him, you're probably the only person that I would ever consider marrying. And he's like, I would drive you crazy. Yeah, but you know what? I, I already know all that. I could tolerate you. Like, that, <laughs> you're the per I've tolerated you for 20 years. So, you know, I could probably tolerate you. But it wouldn't, that's it, right? But this fool, he's like, oh, well, you're trying to... Never once, I didn't ask to move in with you. I never asked you to take care of me. Not once. The one time when I was struggling and you helped me pay a bill, I paid you back with a whole freaking kitchen full of food. Right? So, it there was never that expectation. But for some reason, in this man's head, that was what I must have wanted from him. And I don't know if it was because I was a single mom. That was just his automatic assumption. Or if it was because I got pregnant, which, FYI, I was not alone in that whole process. <laughs> there was another person there. That was you. And you helped out. And you're just as responsible. So, uh, you know, it just, it's that immediate, I'm going to judge you. I'm going to make a snap decision about you. And it's going to impact the way I treat you right out of the gate. It is so unacceptable. And and like I said, I have had my moments too. I we're all human. And I think it's unfortunate, but that we we tend to make those snap judgments, right? But I mean, I'm trying to be more aware of it and recognize, you know, and, and acknowledge like if I if I have that little thought pop in my head, you know, of oh look at that girl. She, I immediately, I try and make myself go, you know what? You don't know their story. You don't know their story. You have no idea why that woman is on the side of the road begging for food. Could she be an addict? Yeah, she could. Could she truly be trying to feed her children? Yeah, she could too. You know, I'm not going to judge you. The, you know, the single mom who's paying her groceries with food stamps, that doesn't mean she doesn't have a job. That doesn't mean that she's, you know, not paying her bills. It just means she needed help. And we all need help at least once in our lives. And, you know, you know, it just, ugh, it's so frustrating to me. Because, again, I catch myself sometimes doing it too. And I'm, I'm making a conscious effort to remember and recognize and say, you know what? They don't know my story. I don't know theirs. 
And, you know, I've seen people who, you know, recently I actually saw a gentleman who was begging for food and money uh, behind one of the uh, local store. Like there's like a little strip mall by my house. Um, and he was standing behind one of the food places there and he was begging for food or money. He was asking people if they had, you know, he was, he was asking people for their leftovers. Right. And I saw him coming in. I got my food. I felt bad because I couldn't get him anything. I wanted to get him something and I just, I couldn't. Um, and you know, at the same time, then I stop and think, God, I could have split my food with him. I could have just given him my food and gone home. I, you know, I always think that I could be a better person. I always think that I could be a better person. There are so many times where I'm like, dang, you know, I should have, I should have done that, you know? So then the next time I, I will do that. Um, there are many, many times when I have extra money. It doesn't happen often, right? But when I do have extra money and things are going really, really well, um, I would um, go to Walmart and I would get like $20 gift cards, just a whole bunch of them. And then when I saw people out there begging, I would give them a $20 gift card to Walmart. And they were always, always grateful. I'm like, seriously, you know, they were suspicious. They're like, what? I'm like, there's money on it, I swear. <laughs> there's there's money. I'm not giving you a fake card that's really shitty. If somebody does that to you, I'm really sorry. But there, there's money on the card, I promise. Um, so, but when I came out from, from getting my food, I saw another gentleman sitting and talking to the, the guy who had been begging for food. And he was just talking to him. He was asking him his story. You know, he was trying to find out, hey man, why are you here? What happened? What's going on? Can you, can I help you? And it was really, really moving to see that, to, to see someone sit down and go, hey, how can I help you? What happened? How'd you get here? Right? And sometimes their stories are very, very sad. Sometimes their stories are self-inflicted. You know, they had a drug problem and it cost them everything. There are some times where the people are legit mentally ill, right? Like they were in homes or they were in, you know, hospitals or facilities and they they can't pay, right? They can't pay and nobody's taking care of them and nobody's there to help them. So they just get put back out on the street. And it sucks and it's sad. But you don't know. You have no idea. So, you know, I guess the point of today's podcast is just that, you know, the next time you catch yourself making that snap judgment, making that judgment about that woman or that other mom. I mean, as moms, we do it to each other. Oh, my God. Women, we, oh, we're crazy. We are. I mean, I'm sorry, but we are. <laughs> I'll be the first to admit it. Um, but we're nasty to each other. And it sucks because our whole, I mean, we should be building each other up, right? I, I saw a post and I'll, I'll post it on the on the blog with this uh, podcast. But there's a there's like a image I saw that said, you know, your circle and the people around you should want your success. They should clap when things go well for you. They shouldn't be behind your back sniping about it, talking crap. And if they're not lifting you up and clapping for you, then find yourself another circle, right? We as women, we totally can take each other out. And it's wrong. We should lift each other up no matter what. I don't gotta like your choices. I don't have to like your lifestyle necessarily, but I will support you as a woman, as a person, you know? I may be trying to tell you, hey, you know, you may be probably not making the best choices with your life, but we shouldn't tear each other down. We shouldn't tear anybody down, right? And and like I said, there's been, I've been trying a lot harder to be better about it. And again, I'm not, not saying I'm perfect because I'm not. I, like I said, I like going on and getting all the Trumpers all Twitter pated and <laughs> riled up it's kind of fun and it doesn't take much <laughs> but in doing it I'm I'm checking myself I'm trying to do it in a fashion where like I'm bringing up actual valid points I may be a smart ass in how I present it but I'm trying to bring up valid points but at the same time or just saying hey this is my opinion this is how I feel right um 
But I've caught myself where I like, I'll start typing out and I'm like, you know, trying to insult the person. I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm like <laughs> pushing the little back button. <laughs> like, nope, nope, no, no, no. Um, and so, or I'll, I'll find myself, you know, making a snap judgment on a story that I read. You know, I see something about a mom, you know, who, uh, you know, what was it? There was one lady who she got in trouble for leaving her kids in the car so she could go to a job interview. And so many people were like, you can't do that. How dare you? But at the same time, I'm like, you know, if you're struggling and you're desperate and you're trying to do everything you can to get back on your feet and you get called in for a job interview and you don't have anybody to watch your kids, you know that you may not get called again for that, right? So what do you do? You got to try and put yourself in the person's shoes. Like, what would you do? Yeah, no, it's not okay to leave them in the car. But dang, you know, what are your choices? What was she, you know, she left him at home. She'd be in just as much trouble. Why do we have a society where she can't afford to put her kids in childcare? Why do we have a society where the, the lowest among us and the most, the, those who struggle the most end up vilified by, because they're doing whatever they need to do to try and raise themselves up, Right. I don't understand that. And I never have. So, you know, it's easy to just go, can't believe that. But take a second, stop before you do that or catch yourself and put yourself in check and just say, you know, if it was me, if that was my situation, what would I do? Would I be doing the same thing? Would I ever be, if I was that desperate? doing what that person is doing, you know, I guarantee you the majority of people who go down and apply for government assistance, they hate the fact that they're there. It's embarrassing. It's degrading. It doesn't feel good. Nobody likes having to say, help me because I can't do it myself. It's, it's a pride thing. The majority of the people who are getting those services, who stand in line, who, who, you know, and granted now you don't have to stand in line like you used to for the majority, but it's still, it, it takes something out of you. It does. Because you would much rather, I guarantee you, they would much rather be doing it themselves without help. Anytime we see someone on the side of the road begging, if my kids are in the car, anytime we see him, you know, my son, my son came home one day and he told me, he goes, mom, he goes, I gave all the rest of my money that I had to this guy who was sitting outside the grocery store. He was homeless and he was begging for food and I gave him all the rest of the money I had. I was like, how much money did you give me? He's like, I don't know, like $45. I was like, dude, like that was very nice of you. I was like, you, you probably didn't have to give him that much. He's like, no, I did. He goes, I have a home. I'm coming home to a house that has heat and that has food in it. And he doesn't. So it's better for him to have it. Anytime I see him on the side of the road, I tell my kids every day. I'm like, every time we see him, I'm like, just remember, everybody, everybody is one bad thing away from that. Everybody. I don't care who you are. One bad thing could take everything away from you, right? Getting really sick and having millions of dollars worth of medical bills that you can't cover, you know? Losing your job, not being able to find another one. Bam, you don't have a home. Can't pay your rent, can't pay your mortgage. What? Right? There's families living out of cars. Working full-time jobs, living out of cars. We are all just one bad thing away. So, moving forward from today, always, always check yourself and say, you know what? I'm not going to judge you. I'm not going to judge you because I don't know your story. I don't know why you feel the way you do. I don't know why you think the way you do. You know, I'm trying. I'm working on it. It's a work in progress. <laughs> it's not always easy. But you feel better for it and you become a more understanding person for it. And I know that that's how I would like other people 
and what I would like them to do before they look at me and make a judgment about me because they don't know me. So they can't speak to what I've gone through. They have no idea. Just as I have no idea what brought them to where they are. So I hope that this was inspirational, helpful in some way. I hope that you enjoyed it. I will be back next week with another podcast. And until then, don't ever forget that you are absolutely wonderful. Take care. Thanks for joining me today for the Single Mom Success Podcast. I hope that you enjoyed it and that you found it inspirational in some way. Don't forget to visit thesinglemomblog.com for more of our podcasts, articles, downloads, and free giveaways. I hope that you have a fantastic day and never forget that you are amazing.